Welcome back to New Day. Secretary of State John Kerry accusing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of undermining the path to peace in the Middle East. This comes after a United Nations resolution condemning Israeli settlements in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. Joining us now is an executive committee member of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, Dr. Hannah Ashwa. We thank you for being with me. I appreciate it. And we have a bit of a delay here, so I'm going to get right to it uh, so we're not speaking over one another. Um, let me begin okay. with this. Um, David Keyes uh, from uh, the Israeli government spokesperson for Benjamin Netanyahu just came on the program earlier and spoke with Don about, uh, about where we go, frankly, from here, really pointing his finger at you and the Palestinians. I want your reaction to this. Listen. Every time they were offered, they said no. And the reason is simple, because the conflict is not about the creation of a Palestinian state. It's about the existence of a Jewish state. And I can quote uh, Palestinian ministers saying precisely that as well. And I can, you know, tick down the list from Nabil Shath, who said we will never accept two states for two peoples, to President Abbas, who said we will never accept a Jewish state, to uh, Farouk Kadumi, to Abbas Zaki, uh, to uh, on and on down the list. Your response to that, what is the Palestinian commitment to a two-state solution at this point in time? I think instead of dealing with circumlocution and attempts at uh, deception, let's look at the facts. We have recognized the state of Israel in 1993. But not as a Jewish state, doctor. Not as a Jewish state, and you know that is, that is conditional. Uh, the Netanyahu we've government already, is saying that is part of the We've already answered that. Now, <laughs> that's a new precondition. Uh, before, the condition was that the Palestinians have to recognize Israel and have to recognize Israel's right to exist and so on. Now, when they've destroyed the peace process and all the talks, they introduced another precondition, is that we have all to become Zionists suddenly, and we have to accept the idea of the Jewish state when we are desperately struggling to have, as I said the other day, an inclusive, democratic, tolerant uh, that, uh, Palestinian state. We cannot accept a religion for any state. We cannot talk about Jewish states or Islamic states or Christian states. Otherwise, you will end up having to deal with the Islamic state. We personally believe that there is no license to discriminate against any group, any ethnicity, any religion, or to give them any additional value because of their ethnicity and religion. So if you want equality and if you want a state to be an equal among other states, then you recognize the democratic state and that should be enough. We recognize Doctor. Israel. If they want us to take that back, we will. But we're not going to take it back just because they want us to uh, become Zionists suddenly. Uh, doctor, you have said that, uh, and, and, and the, uh, you know, the PLO largely has said, look, you have to stop this settlement building before we can get to peace talks again, before we can get, move forward with this process. If you look historically yes. back, not that long yes. ago, 2009, uh, the Israeli government spent 10 months with a complete freeze on settlement building. And the Palestinians did not come to the table for months and months and months until the very end. What guarantee do they have that a freeze would, would be meaningful for moving the peace process forward this time? What freeze? Look, Israel wants to be rewarded if it wants to diminish a bit some of its illegal actions and violations. Settlement activities are illegal. It shouldn't be up to question or negotiations. They shouldn't be building settlements. They shouldn't be stealing the land of the other state if they're committed to two-state solution. Now, this is a grand deception that they froze the settlement building. They didn't because they considered Jerusalem annexed and they could build in and around Jerusalem and they continued. They said they had already given out hundreds and thousands of permits and they couldn't renege on these permits. So if you look at the facts, you will see that in these so-called 10 months of freeze, they built even more than they did before that. So Do Doctor, we're tired you say of that having the Israelis to respond should not be building. to Israeli deceptions. Let's look at the facts. Doctor, you say the Israelis anyway, should not be building, yes, of building course, these settlement. settlements. And at the same time, they say, uh, Absolutely. You, they say that, that terrorism on the part of some Palestinians must stop. Even Secretary Kerry addressed that with these words <laughs> yesterday. Listen. Yeah. And the most recent wave of Palestinian violence has included hundreds of terrorist attacks in the past year, including stabbings, shootings, vehicular attacks, and bombings, many by individuals who have been radicalized by social media. Yet the murderers of innocents are still glorified on Fatah websites 
including showing attackers next to Palestinian leaders following attacks. Doctor, as you know, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has condemned uh, attacks on the part of Israelis, uh, calling those attackers Jewish terrorists who did the firebombing in Maybe. Duma, also Maybe. condemning the arson that was carried out by Jewish extremists at the church in northern Israel. Where is the Palestinian Maybe. condemnation yeah. 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 Of, of the attacks that Secretary Kerry is talking about? Look. Look, we can always enter into a verbal game and show how much we have not only condemned violence, but we have worked actively against violence against civilians. The question is, Israel uses its, mili its military machine in order to wreak havoc, to kill thousands of Palestinians, to bomb and shell, and to carry out extrajudicial killings, and they don't care, they don't mind. The thing is, Israel is used to acting with impunity, and internally it has given its settlers, including the army, uh, the person actually who shot a wounded Palestinian was exonerated. People who burned a whole family alive were not punished. People who burned the Palestinian uh, young boy alive were also told that they were not balanced and so on. This impunity has continued because Palestinian lives do not matter to Israelis and to the rest of the world. Daily you have Palestinians being killed. This is what we call the essence of Israeli state terrorism. Let me get your reaction. Practiced by an army against a captive civilian population. And this population, excuse me, but you cannot constantly tell the Palestinians who have no rights, no freedoms, living under a brutal military occupation, that they have to constantly turn the other cheek and they have to lie down and die peacefully when the Israelis have a free hand to use the most horrific violence against us and to get away with it. Uh, under the claim of self-defense from their own victims. I said this before, I say this again. We are the only people on earth who are asked, who are held responsible for the safety and security of their occupiers, whether it's the army or the settlers. It's Do the occupation Doctor, that has to be held responsible let me get your for the safety of a captive population. To what Democratic Senator uh, Chuck Schumer mm -hmm. came out and said after Kerry's remarks yesterday. I'm just going to read you part of this in the, in the sake of time. But he said the Israeli government forced settlers to withdraw from all yeah. settlements, and Palestinians responded by sending rockets from Gaza into Israel. Well, he may not have intended it, I fear. Secretary Kerry, in his speech and actions at the United Nations, has emboldened extremists on both sides. What is your reaction to that, emboldening, emboldening extremists on both sides? I think the last eight years of allowing for Israeli impunity and violations have emboldened extremists on the Israeli side. This is why the Israeli government has stepped up settlement activities, Palestinian home demolitions, killings, and so on, because it knew it could get away with it. Secretary <laughs> Kerry's speech was, I think, a last-ditch effort to rescue the chances of peace, knowing that it's going to fall on deaf ears in Israel because they're the ones who are destroying the chances of peace. If you're talking about Gaza, Israel is still controlling Gaza. It controls territorial waters, airspace, and of course, the land itself by closing and all the uh, exit and entry points and turning Gaza into a massive prison with 40% unemployment, with 80% poverty. This is what Israel is doing to Gaza, and every couple of years, it launches horrific military campaigns against a captive population, killing thousands, obliterating whole families. And yet everybody's worried about Israel's safety well, when it's look, the Palestinians who are suffering. Doctor, we're out of time. Extremism but it, exists, it, it, and it, this extremism. Doctor, we're out of time. You know we'll have you back, but, but also the United States, as you know, deems Hamas that. that governs yeah. Gaza we need to a, a terrorist organization. We will have you back. Thank you for joining us this morning. Don. Much more to talk about now, and including presidential politics. President like Donald Trump meets with a well known presidential historian who is a familiar face here on CNN. What did Trump want to know about his predecessors? We're going to